Living green or sustainably is about more than saving on your electric bill and doing your part to protect natural resources. It is about a safer and healthier life for you and your family without sacrificing style, quality, or budget. This is a movement to provide all of us with clean air to breathe and water to drink, safe, healthy food to eat and places to live, and energy to run the places where we live, learn, play, and work. The Everyday Green Home Podcast helps you get the value of green for you, your family, and your community. Whether it's green homes, green living, or the people who make it happen, Join me, Marla Esser Close, to learn how green and sustainability practices and products work for you and our world. Your home is your refuge. It's the place where life happens. You know, the little stuff that happens every day, where you wake up and smell the coffee, where you read your kiddo a bedtime story, scratch your dog's tummy and all the other little actions that make our houses home. But our homes have a secret life. With all the complexity of our modern life, we unknowingly may be living in, building, or remodeling a home that is not in our best interest. It may be something big like old lead paint or mold or new paint and cabinets that off-gas. Not good. But chances are it's the small stuff the leaky toilet, the drafty window, or the products you use to clean and sanitize. Having a green or greener home does not have to be hard or require sacrifice. A green home is not all or nothing. It starts with making smart choices about products and materials as you live in, build, or remodel your home. Just making a different choice in an appliance or plumbing or lighting fixture or even paint can set you on the course to a home which works better for you and yours. With the help of my book, Living Green Effortlessly, Simple Choices for a Better Home, we will cover the basics of the systems and features of your home and how to make the best of them. Join me to get started on your better home. Welcome. I'm Marla, the Green Home Coach. Come on in. I'd like to talk with you about green homes and why they're the very best homes of all when you decide you want one. We'll talk about how easy it is to green your own home. And if you want to go all in with your own dream green home, we can talk about that too. It's all in here. Are you ready to learn more about green homes and how to have one? Good. Come on in. The first time was a cave. Not the most comfortable accommodation, but caves have some definite green attributes. This temperature stays at a pretty constant level despite the weather outside. Location mattered. The sun shining on and into the opening could warm it by day, and a fire could carry on through the night. Caves provided protection from elements and from danger in the neighborhood. But humans being human, the search for a more comfortable home was on. They built with grass or wood or stone, or some built teepees or yurts, which had the added bonus of being transportable. But no matter what style the home or the material used to build it, the needs of the homeowners were pretty much the same. Comfort and safety, balanced by convenience and cost. Not much has changed. What do we want in a home? Comfort, safety, and convenience. It doesn't cost too much. And these days I'd add in health and wellness too. Well, the McMansions of the 20th century are something that cave women couldn't begin to dream of, but they are one more expression of the eternal search for a better home. In the 21st century, we see that bigger may not always be better. Our need for comfort and safety can be overwhelmed by costs, economic, physical, and social. Anyone with a castle will tell you that the heating bills will break the bank and you're never really warm anyway. There is a better way to live like royalty in your own home. When we stop to think about it, we can see how our choices in location, design, materials, and methods of heating or cooling have a direct effect on our health, our family's health, and the health of the community in which we live. Never before have we been so aware of the powerful effects 
of even the simple home improvement choices we make, from light bulbs to paint, roof shingles to lawns. As Henry David Thoreau said, what's the use of a fine house if you haven't got a tolerable planet to put it on? Since the beginning, we humans have depended on the world around us to keep us alive. With sunlight, food, and water, we still do. In spite of our ability to close the door and turn on the AC, we are still part of the natural system that creates, sustains, and perpetuates this living earth. If by our choice, we introduce terrible poisons into that system or waste a resource such as trees or oil that can't be renewed, we are damaging the system that includes us and the whole earth. How do you pay back withdrawals like that? Isn't it time to look more closely at the systems in our homes and see whether they are truly serving our needs and the needs of our earth, there are better ways to get things done. Now, going green is a movement that has been kicking around for several decades that most people think it's just about energy, and it's not. It's about living healthier, more comfortable lives, and it's about having more time to go out and enjoy the world because you've already taken care of your home. My grandmother was a young adult, in the lean and challenging years of the Great Depression, she always said, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. We're nearly 100 years from those trying times, but that still seems like the best way to live. The whole idea of green, and my point of view here, is taking responsibility for my own actions and living my values to support life in all the ways I can. That means making wise improvements in my home driving a gas-efficient car, recycling, and yeah, I sometimes take it home if I can't find a recycling spot, and just turning stuff off, lights, fans, water, you know, when I don't need them. It doesn't feel right for me to tell you about all the things we can do and not do them myself. I also recognize that I can't do everything at once, so I make whatever changes I can today. I do something earth-friendly every day, my mission and my passion revolve around three things, green sustainable practices, homes, and empowering women. My goal is to share my philosophy, why I want every home to be green, and my knowledge to empower women and men to create safer, healthier, more comfortable homes for themselves and their families. Is there anything more important than this in our lives? My responsibility to you is to share what I have learned, which is some motivation for this group, as well as my book, Living Green Effortlessly, Simple Choices for a Better Home. My teachings here in this group, in my workshops, and in the Everyday Green Home podcast, all of this information and our services are available to help you get going. Whether you want to make a few better, greener choices on your next shopping trip, or if you want to build a whole new green certified home or to accomplish something in between. Surprisingly, it does not cost any more and sometimes less to include these practices and buying habits in your daily life. Like anything else we do with a long-term payoff, it does take a little research, a little planning, and above all else, taking action. You can have the best greenhouse in the world, but your behaviors can bring it all down. Living green has to be a blend of the stuff you buy and the things you do. If each of us built five simple practices or changes in buying habits into our daily routines, we would all soon have our own everyday green home and we could change the world. Hi, I'm Marla, the Green Home Coach, and welcome to the first unit of teaching based on my book, doesn't show up very well, Living Green Effortlessly, Simple Choices for a Better Home. This series is going to cover some of the highlights of my book, chapter by chapter, as a way of starting discussion and as a way for us to learn together things that you may be able to do in your own home. So today is chapter one. What is an everyday green home? It's just plain old common sense. You want your home to look great, feel great, and perform great. An everyday green home is about much more than just energy and cost savings. It impacts your daily life in all of these ways. Health and safety. 
breathe easier and feel healthier by reducing pollutants, toxins like chemicals, mold and mildew and water damage through better airflow systems and quality material choices. Comfort, feel comfortable without hot or cold spots or drafts by providing a well-sealed and insulated shell and better heating, ventilating and air conditioning or HVAC systems. Ease, convenience and time. Save time by using materials, fixtures, and finishes that perform better, last longer, and require less maintenance. And lastly, money. Enjoy savings in your green home with dramatically lower operating costs, especially energy and maintenance costs. Enjoy higher selling prices for certified green homes too. Comfort may be the one thing that all humans are looking for in a home. Like many things in life, Comfort means something different to each of us. For me, the comfort is an even temperature with no drafts and a hot shower. My hands and feet seem to be cold a lot. What's your definition of all the comforts of home? My primary goal in writing this book is to help you improve your comfort, health, and safety in your own home, sweet home. So are green homes worth more? Yes, The home industry is on a transformational change right now, and we are seeing the crest of green as mainstream coming rapidly. Many of our homes already have green and greener features in them, and you may not even know. Matter of fact, your builder may not even know, or your realtor. But with a little bit of knowledge, and hopefully you'll get that here in this class or this unit, you should be able to start pointing out some of those features and understanding the value of those. So as the Green Home Coach, I work with homeowners and home building professionals to include green choices that do have a positive impact on the world we live in together. So a bit of BS, building science that is. A few years ago, I spent a couple of days in an advanced green building class As much as I have already learned about building science, and I'm still learning, (laughs) this class gave me a glimpse of the rest of the iceberg. More importantly, it made me realize how overwhelming it can be for a homeowner to keep up with the latest developments in home improvement. It's just common sense to want our homes to be in the very best condition possible and working for us rather than us working for them, our homes. But the complexity of the materials, systems, and components in our homes makes this very challenging. So what's a homeowner to do? So we rely on our homes for many things, especially shelter and comfort. But these numerous home systems all working together to provide these comforts are often taken for granted. They work great until they don't. So Understanding how these systems work together, how they support each other, and how they depend on each other and how to take care of them is crucial to us maintaining health, comfort, and safety in our homes, and also to understanding how to repair and maintain them as we go. So understanding a little bit of the building science behind our homes and included in our homes Yeah, it sounds a little bit like high school science, but it's really, really helpful to understand that. And you got to remember our homes are a system of systems. So just like your body, all of these systems have to work together. So for example, new double pane windows could increase and probably will increase your comfort inside of your home. They'll improve the appearance and the resale value of your home and lower your heating and air conditioning bills too. Sounds like a win-win-win. But one of the things that you do want to remember is that replacing windows is pretty costly. So you want to make sure that that's the first thing you should do. If you're doing a remodel or a big gut rehab, it's a no-brainer. New windows are a must because they impact so many other systems in our homes. Make sense? So understanding building science in depth is not something we're all going to do. And this is when it's time to bring in a home energy professional. You may have heard them called home energy auditors or home assessors. Oftentimes you can find them through your utility company or even just looking locally to see who is out there. A lot of our utility companies offer a 
weatherization or an energy program that's do it yourself. And many of them also will refer you to or may have full energy assessments. This is a super valuable tool. When someone comes in to evaluate your home, they take a view that you may not see and they will take the time to help you understand what the challenges are and the issues and what can be done about them and help you to prioritize them. So honestly, if you're doing a remodel or you're getting ready to do a HVAC replacement, heating and cooling unit replacement or insulation or anything that is going to impact the systems in your home, highly, highly recommend having a professional energy assessment first so you can really understand the impacts that those are all going to have on you, your family, and your home. So keep that in mind. And if you can't find somebody in your area, give me a holler and I will help you find somebody. So next section, how well does your home perform? And most of us think our homes perform pretty well, at least until we add up all the utility bills. Don't forget the water, sewer, and trash bill. They count too. And you know, the more water you use, the more sewage you produce. So that really, that can add up. It is so easy to forget that our homes are systems and changing one thing will impact others. You know, it's the domino effect. So home performance focuses on improving dwellings, improving the comfort and health and finding ways to quit wasting money on energy and water that you don't even use. Let me repeat myself. Wasting money on energy and water we don't even use. And even crazier, that water that we waste is treated water. So we may water our yard or water the driveway when we're washing the car with water that we have paid to have treated so it is drinkable. So just simply cutting the waste out of our homes and out of our behaviors can save resources and money and make a big dent all on its own. So there's a couple of different approaches when we're looking at home performance, and one of them is to cut the waste. Another is to be more efficient in how we use the resource at hand, energy, and maybe a physical resource like wood or drywall or paint, as well as the utilities like water, sewage, et cetera, trash. So all of this, we want to waste as little as possible because that means we're using it all a lot more efficiently getting a bigger bang for our buck too. So that's a good one to think of. So in most existing homes, wasted energy continues to be a big deal and it's impacting your wallet as well. That is the point of energy efficiency to stop wasting energy and money and use what we do use more efficiently. So quick side note, what are some places where you waste energy? Leaving things on, leaving the TV on, leaving the ceiling fan on when someone is not in the room. Ceiling fans only cool people, not rooms. Leaving the lights on when nobody is there. And you can keep going. Leaving the computer on when nobody's there. And a lot of times, all of these devices that we have that are on standby, or we use a remote to turn them on, they stay on standby and they use something called vampire or phantom energy. So they always have a little bit of energy running through them so they can be instant on. And For things that we're not using a lot, that little phantom current, that adds up. So there's some special smart strips that you can get for your home that allows you to plug in on one part of the strip, the things that need to stay plugged in all the time. Maybe it's your controller, for instance, you don't want that to go down. And then the other part of the strip lets you plug in the things that can be powered down safely so that you are not wasting all the energy that's going with them. So you can also find a lot of tips in my book. You can find a lot of tips online. Your utility company, your electricity company has a ton of tips on how to use your electricity more efficiently. And a lot of people ask, like, why does my electricity company want me to use less of what they make? Electricity. And this is kind of a conundrum until you look at the bigger picture. So producing and buying and selling electricity is really, really complicated. I got a little bit of an introduction to this over the past few years. And the easiest way to think about it is electricity is produced by multiple sources in your power pool. So it's like a regional area. And then depending on the time of day, basically 
the companies that send the electricity out to us as users, they bid on it. So it's like this constant bidding going on. Well, when there's a lot of people bidding on the electricity, like when it's 100 degrees outside and air conditioning is going full tilt, the price of energy goes way up. So in order for there to be enough electricity on those peak days and those peak hours, we have to have something called peak load production. My brain just went poof. So that peak load production can be very, very expensive to produce. So companies that make electricity and distribute electricity and sell it to us want to level out how we use electricity. And that is why they are very interested in helping us to use less electricity so that we can have a more balanced approach to it. So by knowing that, for instance, I do a budget billing approach and I also use smart hours. So that helps the electricity company that I use to have a better handle on what my expected uses of my electricity are so they can plan better. And the pricing works out with all that too. Kind of a complicated (laughs) discussion, but here's the deal. Use your electricity and everything else as wisely as you can. If you just use what you need and no more, and you should use what you need, I mean, that's fair. Then we are making sure there's enough to get around and we're not throwing it out the window because just throwing away good resources just doesn't make sense. So for the sake of energy efficiency, that home professional to do a home energy audit is definitely one of the most helpful tools that you can bring in to your home to help you understand the priorities and what you can fix. It's going to be the biggest bang for your buck. So you can also find online tools. If you go to energystar.gov, there's a, um, an energy yardstick, I believe it's called the BPI, which stands for the Building Performance Institute. They offer some great tools and questionnaires on their website which is bpihomeowner.org. So those tools will help you do some self-assessment should you not be at a point to bring a professional home energy assessor in at this point in time. So onward from energy. Caveat here. Energy is where a lot of this discussion starts. And for, I think, quite a while, a lot of people assumed green homes meant energy efficiency. And green is a big term, and it encompasses a lot of things. And one of those is energy efficiency. But it's important to remember there are other factors that come into play. There's water, there's resource efficiency, there's how the home reacts and sits on the land and how it's positioned on the land. There's indoor environmental quality and the air quality that goes along with that. And there's how our behaviors and our use of the home work in tandem with the homes. All of that comes into play in a green home but energy efficiency is a good place to start. So I want you to also remember that a green home is not all or nothing. You can be a greener home. And by greener, you have practices and products into your home and your living experience that are going to be better. They're healthier, they're safer, they make you more comfortable, and they likely use fewer resources. They are less toxic. So they are overall better for you, better for our communities, and in turn, better for this big world that we all share. So keep that in mind. A green home does not have to be all or nothing. One of my favorite things to teach is what I call incremental green. And this is all about not having to be all or nothing. Incremental green means as we are repairing, replacing, and maintaining things in our home, we are making a better choice with each of those decisions. So for instance, you need to buy a new refrigerator. Well, shop around a little bit and find an Energy Star or an energy saving refrigerator that's going to probably not cost you any more now. It might have a few years ago, but it's going to save you in the operations cost It's likely going to be a lower maintenance refrigerator because we oftentimes find that when companies take their products through an independent third-party certification like Energy Star, they oftentimes correlate with better quality as well because they've got that third-party oversight. So that's just a natural correlation that typically happens with that. So make those decisions 
as you can to incrementally green your home as you go. There's a lot more information on this topic in chapter one of my book. So definitely if you want to see if you can check it out from the library or there's a link in the notes here for where you can buy your own copy if you'd like to, but there's a lot more detail and all the resources are also listed in the book as well. So as we had talked through, water was another big component that comes up as we are talking about an everyday green home. And there's a really tight correlation between water and energy. And this one is kind of one that we all go, hmm, didn't think about that. But it takes water to make electricity and it takes electricity to clean and move water. And then we use water in almost every manufacturing and production and industrial process as well. So water is a huge part of the equation. So even simple decisions about what we make can have decisions and implications upon water. And there's a great write-up on this in my book um, that you can dive into more. And I hope you will have a few questions about it. Definitely bring your questions back so we can talk about them. If you're listening to this on the podcast, write your questions in the comments and we will get an answer back to you because there's a lot of questions out there and we want to find the answers for you. So understanding how you can have your own everyday green home, how the different parts of your home impact each other, the system of systems that we have is a key part of all of this and understanding how you too can have a green home one step at a time, incrementally green is all what this chapter is about. I hope you've learned something new today and I look forward to seeing you for the next chapter. That wraps this episode of the Everyday Green Home Podcast. Get the show notes with all the resources mentioned in this episode and be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. Ready to get started? Get more information, how-tos, and resources in my private Facebook group, Love Your Everyday Green Home. See you there. And remember that living a little better and a little greener is easier than you think.